Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister issues directions to make 10 month internship compulsory for graduation courses. Union Education Minister launches mandate document for national curriculum framework. Jharkhand JPSC main exam results declared. Frame scheme for MBBS students hit by Ukraine crisis within two months, says Supreme Court to National Medical Commission. Mother-son duo appears together for metric exam in Odisha. IGNU B.Ed. Admit Card 2022 release. CUET to provide equal opportunities to all candidates across India, says Delhi University Vice Chancellor. Good afternoon and a warm welcome. You're watching Education News Network, where we get you the latest developments in education at the top of the hour. This is Nitya reporting from ENN, and the daily stories are Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Vyas Jagan Mohan Reddy has directed officials to make 10 months of internships mandatory for graduation courses. This was done at a review meeting with the Higher Education Department held on Friday. The Chief Minister stated that the internships should be in three phases, with two months for the first year, two months for the second year and six months for the third year. He instructed the authorities to ensure a considerable rise in the gross enrollment ratio, noting that the state government is putting in place measures to achieve this goal. The Chief Minister said free reimbursement is being provided under Vidya Devana and the charges for accommodation under Vasati Devana so that poverty won't deprive a student of pursuing higher education. GER should be more than 80%. He further said that higher education courses should be job-oriented while adding that supplementary courses and special courses should be added to the existing courses. Students should become proficient in English to increase communication skills and to provide the best training to students for GRE and GMAT exams, he said. Union Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan released the guidelines for the development of the National Curriculum Framework, that is NCF, on Friday. While launching the document, he remarked that the National Education Policy 2020 is the philosophy, National Curriculum Framework is the pathway, and the mandate document released by him is the constitution to champion the changing demands of the 21st century and impact the future positively. He further said that the mandate document is going to bring about a paradigm shift in addition to a focus on the holistic development of children, emphasis on skilling, the vital role of teachers, learning in the mother tongue and cultural rootedness. The Union Minister added that this is also a step towards the decolonization of the Indian education system as he termed preparation for the National Curriculum Framework, a scientific and continuous process and the NCF as a society's document. Additionally, he also recommended setting up an app-based process so that every citizen of the country can give their suggestions, expressing his appreciation for the experts, academia and intellectuals for making this possible for the Indian knowledge system. Union Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan remarked that the NEP 2020-based education model will serve as a benchmark for emerging economies across the world. The result of JPSC 7th to 10th main examinations has been declared. A total of 802 candidates have been declared successful in this exam result of JPSC and the interview dates have also been announced. Following the uproar regarding cancellation of prelims and fresh dates for this examination, the High Court had given instructions to release the revised result after which the main examination was conducted. The civil services main exam was held from March 11th to March 13th. In the notification issued by the Commission, it has been said that the document verification of successful candidates for appearing in the interview will be done from May 8th to May 15th at 10 a.m. At the same time, the interview will be taken from May 9th to May 16th at 9.30 a.m. in the Commission's office. Candidates can download their call letter for document verification and interview from the website of the Commission from May 2nd. The Commission has said that if someone's call letter is not downloaded, then they can get it before May 8 at the inquiry counter of the Commission by giving their roll number and date of birth. In case of any kind of error in the result due to typing, the result can be amended. On the day of document verification, the candidates have been asked to bring the original certificate of eligibility. The Supreme Court on Friday asked the National Medical Commission to frame a scheme within two months to complete clinical training in medical colleges to help MBBS students from foreign universities who have been facing difficulties because of the Ukraine crisis. The direction of the Apex Court came as it was hearing an appeal by the NMC against a Madras High Court order which asked it to register as an MBBS graduate from a Chinese university. 
The court had stated that there was nothing wrong in denying provisional registrations because without practical training, there cannot be any doctor who is expected to take care of the citizens of the country. A bench of Justices Hemant Gupta and V. Ramasubramanian said, No doubt the pandemic has thrown new challenges to the entire world, including the students. But granting provisional registration to complete an internship to a student who has not undergone clinical training would be compromising with the health of the citizens of any country and the health infrastructure at large. Nonetheless, taking note of the plight of the student unable to complete his clinical training physically in the concerned Chinese Institute because of the pandemic situation, while remarking that talent should not be allowed to be wasted and services should be used to augment health infrastructure in the country. In his judgment, Justice Hemant Gupta wrote, We therefore direct to frame a scheme as a one-time measure within two months to allow the student and such similarly situated students who have not actually completed clinical training to undergo clinical training in India in the medical colleges which may be identified by the appellant for a limited duration as may be specified by the appellant on such charges which the appellant determines. The matric board examinations in Orissa began on Friday and in an unusual turn of events, a mother and son duo appeared for the board exams together. When the 36-year-old Josna Padi saw her son preparing for the class 10 board exams online amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, it inspired her to complete her studies, which were discontinued due to her family's problems at the time of her marriage. Josna is from Pujariput village under Jaipur block of the tribal belt of Koraput district. Her husband, Trinath Patra, runs a kiosk of a nationalized bank at Pujariput village. Speaking about attending the board exams, Josna says, I am feeling elated about being able to appear for the exams. I've got the chance after 15 years of my marriage and my husband is also supportive about it. During the lockdown, my son used to take my mobile phone to attend his online classes. I stayed beside him and remained alert all the time so that he didn't miss any of his classes. And during this period only, something aroused the desire to study again. Josna initially had a tough time handling both household work and her studies, but later her family helped her settle in. Her son Alokna said that he is very proud of the fact that his mother is also writing the class 10 board exams with him. Due to problems faced by her family in 2002, Josna was forced to drop out of school. She is appearing for the class 10 correspondence course examination at Government High School in Jaipur. Indira Gandhi National Open University has released the IGNO B. Ed. Admit Card 2022 on its official website. Candidates who will be appearing for the B. Ed. examination can download the Admit Card through the official website of IGNO, that is, igno.ac.in. Candidates have to appear for the B. Ed. examination on May 8, 2022 at various exam centres across the country. The duration for the B. Ed. exam is 2 hours. The reporting time of the exam is 9.15 and entry will not be permitted after 10.15 am. Candidates are to use a blue or black ballpoint pen to mark their answers on the OMR sheet. In the examination hall, cell phones, pagers, calculators and electronic gadgets are strictly prohibited. Vice-Chancellor of DU Yogesh Singh on Friday said that the Common University Entrance Test will provide equal opportunities for candidates nationwide and will be beneficial for all. While speaking at a webinar, he highlighted the problems with the merit-based system which has been discontinued, saying that different boards have different marking patterns, which has led to disparities. He said CUET is a new system. This is the first time Delhi University is carrying out exams under it. Till now, we had a merit-based system that was solely based on the marks obtained in class 12 exams. However, that system had a few issues. Different boards have different marking patterns and that led to disparity. During the webinar, students were informed of the reservation policies for admission to undergraduate courses under the CUET. Talking about the benefits of the CUET course, the DOVC said, The new system provides an equal opportunity to every individual. This is for the benefit of people living in any part of the country. It is beneficial for a person from rural as well as urban areas. DU has initiated various activities to help prospective students with CUET, including setting up a dedicated website. Apart from providing all information regarding admission, CUET's website to spread awareness about the program is already live. There are also video tutorials available to explain the registration process for CUET 2022. That's all for today. Thank you for watching Education News Network. For more such videos, do log on to our website theenn.com and don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. Signing off, this is Nitya.